Records. It's Joe and Lisa with Jolie Farms. Welcome back to the channel. We want to talk to you a little bit today about our wonderful uh, excursion yesterday. Um, we went to the Botanical Gardens in Loja. Now that's not on our 36 things to do in Vilcabamba because it is in Loja, but that's about 40 minutes away from here. So uh, we've been saying for a long time we wanted to go and see that. Yep, we have. We finally, the stars aligned. We got there. The doors were open, we had time to go in, and it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, it's, um, its official name is the Botanical Garden Ronaldo Espinosa, and Ronaldo Espinosa was a botanist, and he established this in 1949. It's uh, now run and sponsored by the National University of Loja, and so uh, they actually staff the place. They use it for education, environmental education, etc., and uh, it's, it's a well-kept, beautiful place and uh, well-run, I think. Um, the entrance is a dollar for foreigners and 50 cents for Ecuadorians. It's really cheap. I, I, they certainly don't pay the staff with that amount of money they collect yeah. with that. So the money is coming from somewhere else, probably from the university, to, to keep that happening. But what a great place. So what do you like best? Uh, I was really impressed that they have a garden just for the orchids. Now, not all of them were blooming. It would have been great to see them all in bloom, but uh, there were a few. But they had it just beautifully set up with the uh, water features and pathways and bridges. And I mean, it was just an amazing sight to see. Yeah, the whole place, you know, they did a lot of water features, reflecting ponds, mm -hmm. things like that. It was tastefully done. And then I think the um, the other thing that was kind of impressive was the uh, bonsai exhibit. I was impressed with the bonsai. They were so cute. They had them up on little pedestals everywhere. And uh, such a wide variety of trees that really, I mean, they even had a fig tree. And it was twisted and beautiful and had a couple of figs on it. It was amazing. Yeah, and, and each uh, bonsai had its uh, had the, the name tag on it and um, the... the uh, the type of it. So, I mean, that was, I think it was all well done. And we in no way saw this entire place. It was so big, Ugh, but it was huge. Yeah, just walking through the bonsai would probably take you 20, 30 minutes, I would say. And don't think any of this is flat. It's all up on hills. It's uh, got little pathways going up and around. I mean, there's just so many things hidden in every nook and cranny. Very, very well done, I think. And, and the pathways, everything was. Well kept. Um, now, I wouldn't call it handicap friendly. I think you no. could probably get a wheelchair down to some of these places, but not all of it. And but, the trees. Uh, oh. The trees were just beautiful and huge. I mean, a, a wonderful, really tall canopy above everything. It was just gorgeous. Yes, they had a lot of the huge cascaria trees. And uh, cascaria is... Um, uh, quite popular here. It's what they take the bark from to make quinine or quinine water. So, um, you know, obviously a big health benefit to the quinine. And uh, our friend over at Sol de Venado Brewing here actually brews his own quinine water and uh, does a nice job with that. Yeah. So there are some picnic areas and some gazebo type things that you can uh, reserve and go there and, and use and you know, there's some nice areas just to sit and rest, too, I thought. Or, there were. There was nice little benches up under the trees out of out in the middle of nowhere um, where you could just sit and reflect and, and take in all the beauty. So I, I'll, I'll show you. They, they give you this nice brochure, and it uh, has a little map, which I'm going to put up on the screen. But this is actually in English. Yeah. So they have one in English or in Spanish for us who are Spanish-challenged. Hmm. Um there was an area that I was particularly interested in, and um, there were some guys out there working, chopping, and and um, uh, farming, so to speak. And it is an, an Andean plants area. It's a giant garden um, where they're trying to preserve these Andean vegetables, basically. And uh, so they have a lot of, of cool things in there. They have, um, uh, oh, everything from quinoa to am amaranth, and um, they have different types of Andean potatoes. I don't know if you know, but Ecuador is a home to a lot of unique potatoes. Um, here in, in the Andean mountains, there's just some really neat stuff. 
Um, and they had it, the sign, I think, said some uh, different types of peppers. And uh, so they're trying to preserve some of these Andean forms of farming and some of these plants that are used for a food source. And I thought that's pretty cool. It was, it was really, it was interesting to watch them out there tilling the ground and uh, to watch the whole process. These guys, you know, with, with like here in Ecuador, two or three different tools, they do all their work. It's just amazing. Um, they also had an area of medicinal plants. So there's a lot of different things that were in that area. We didn't take too much time in there. Yeah, I think we missed that little pathway. All these pathways are connected, but each each one takes you in a completely different direction. And there are signs to lead you to different places and mm -hmm. uh, signs describing uh, what you're looking at in a lot of areas. They had a pretty cool hedgerow garden, if you will. Um, that was kind of neat. Is that the one where all the topiary yeah, was Yeah, the topiary, cut? yeah. Was, that was and, amazing. Yeah, I thought they did a nice job with that. So this place, I mean, I highly recommend it. It's, it's open Monday through Friday and on Saturday and Sunday, uh, different hours, which I'll put up there for you to see. But I think that um, this is a great visit. Plan on going and spending a couple of hours. Um, you probably could see it all in a couple of hours. It's, it's like um, 17 hectares or something like that. So it's a pretty big area. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge. But you can't walk through it really fast because you'll miss a lot of the little bitty um, delicate flowers. I mean, or the, the plants. I was amazed how many plants they had that were similar to what I have at home. But there, they get a lot more water. The climate's a little bit different. How full and and abundant those plants were. It was just amazing. It's amazing. The climate there is just very unique. It's about a little over 2,100 meters um, high. So it's um, a little higher than we are. We're about 2,000 meters here where, where our house is. So, you know, um, not really a big challenge for oxygen. Um, no. But, uh, you know, typical Loja elevation and um, you know it's right on the bus route it's uh, coming out of Loja on your right on the way to Vilcabamba so heading south on the highway from Vilcabamba just past the Redondo and um, it's uh, so you can take a taxi ruta from Vilcabamba it'll let you off right there the bus will let you off right in front of it um, so it's pretty easy to get to I'd say yeah yeah definitely easy to get to yeah, it was a, a great experience, and um, again, you know, it wasn't the, the best weather. Um, it was trying to rain just a little bit, and the sun would kind of come in and out, but, um, but it was still a great experience and, and well worth the visit. So we hope you'll uh, take a look at all the pictures. Hope you'll enjoy it. If you have questions about it and you want to reach out, please do. We always love your comments on it, and all you plant lovers out there, give us a thumbs up. Definitely. Thumbs up and subscribe and go visit the Botanical Gardens. Okay.